Welcome back to the podcast, guys. Hope you're all doing well out there. In this video, we're going to be going over and covering the most important revelations from the recently released affidavit, redacted affidavit, for the FBI search on Mar-a-Lago, which happened on August 5th. Okay, so lots of people have been clamoring for this, especially in the media. And uh, some right-wing figures thought that the release of this document would exonerate Donald Trump. It did not. It made, it, it made him look even more guilty, just like the release of the search warrant that which happened a couple weeks ago, that also made him look even more guilty because we found out that he was being, um, he, the premises was being searched for evidence of criminal activity having to do with the Espionage Act, which made him look even worse. So that's why Donald Trump's lawyers never filed officially for the release of any of this stuff. They've been saying on Truth Social, Trump has, that he wants everything released, but he himself could have released a search warrant the day that he whined about it, but he didn't because he knows it makes him look even more guilty. So it doesn't matter what you're saying in public and you know whining to your supporters. What matters is what do you do, what do you do on the court record? <laughs> and on the court record, they never filed to uh, to release the documents. The government justice department came forward and said, "Let's release uh, a version of the uh, search warrant." The government is the one who said, "Let's release the search warrant." Trump never said it. They didn't block it because that would make them look bad, like they're trying to stop uh, information from coming out. But they never said anything to the positive to release it. Media outlets wanted it released. And the same thing goes for the affidavit. They never filed a document saying that they wanted it released. Okay, media outlets like the New York Times, Washington Post, and a whole bunch of other people wanted it released because you know they 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 want more information. Anyways, they're the media, but the judge has to consider the law. And I'm um, I'm not happy with the fact that anything was released because as I've explained a thousand times, pre-indictment investigation should not be released to anybody because the government has an obligation to build a case against a criminal before they're charged. Donald Trump has not been arrested, he's not been charged, he's not been jailed, so he has no rights when it comes to pre-indictment investigations. The government has all the right to conduct these investigations uh, without notifying anybody, especially the criminal. OK, after the criminal has been charged with a crime, they get to see all the information, all the evidence against them, according to their constitution and the intent of our founding fathers. The Fifth and the Sixth Amendment allows you to see the evidence against you, so to see the witnesses against you, everything. The courtroom is where we conduct all our legal business openly, notoriously, in keeping with the constitution and the intent of our founding fathers. But that happens after the government has built its case and has decided to charge somebody. This is a search. A search is like the like a pre premature step in the investigative process. They haven't even charged anybody. OK, it could be that all of this ends up in no charges for Donald Trump. That's a possibility. After reading this, a very low possibility, but still a possibility that he's not even indicted on this. OK, so he has no rights right now. After he's been arrested, he has a lot of rights. He's a criminal. He's an alleged criminal. And the Constitution and our federal laws provide him a lot of protections, but not yet. OK, so that's a big intro, but let's get into this. OK, so before we get to the actual affidavit, we have a very important verification of things that were uncertain before. The fact that there were civilians cooperating with the Justice Department and the FBI if from inside Mar-a-Lago, that is now verified in court documents. So this is the memorandum of law that was filed before the release of this redacted affidavit explaining to the judge what things should be redacted by the Justice Department. So this is their memorandum of law, which was filed uh, on the 25th, telling the judge why certain information should be redacted, why he should adhere to the redactions that the government has proposed. And as you guys can see, lots of things here are redacted because they have to do with an ongoing investigation. This document should have never even been considered to be released. If it wasn't Donald Trump who was under investigation here, this would never have been released. It was. It is not custom for the for the uh, Justice Department to make their pre uh, pre indictment investigations public in any way. It's and and I don't like the fact that the judge broke that tradition, that very well understood tradition, because there was a lot of public pressure. So I've I've made my position clear on that. I do not agree with the judge's decision, but I also had to be fair and say that nothing nothing that hurts the government's investigation was released here because of the redaction. So that's good. But we did get a couple new uh, piece of information that verifies things and makes Donald Trump look even bad, even worse than he did. He was looking bad before. Now he looks worse. And this is one of them. Uh, this is one of the verifications we have. We'll go to the things that make him look bad later. But this verifies this part right here where they explain to the judge their reasoning. They say the following, for the reasons explained below, the materials the government marked for redaction in the attached document must remain sealed to protect the safety and privacy of a significant number of civilian witnesses. In addition to law enforcement personnel, as well as to protect the integrity of the ongoing investigation and to avoid disclosure of grand jury materials in violation 
of the Federal Rules of Criminal Procedure. I believe it's Rule 6E. So this is a significant development, and this was reported out by media outlets weeks ago, Washington Post, New York Times, and CNN, etc. But I'm hesitant to believe these anonymous sources, so I want to wait until we had confirmation from the prosecutors. And this is straight out of the Justice Department prosecutors who are saying and confirming that they that the FBI has been getting cooperation from civilian witnesses, which means they're not law enforcement, they're not government officials, they're civilians who are either going in and out of Mar-a-Lago or people who work for Donald Trump. Those are the those are two group two main groups that they could be. Maybe there's some other category I'm not thinking of that could be cooperating. But to me, it seems like these, these have to be people who know intimate details about what's going on inside of Mar-a-Lago. Otherwise, they would not be valuable cooperators. So this basically verifies that. OK, so I want to cover that first. And this is from the memorandum. This is at the bottom of the document. So let's go all the way to the top. There are some things I want to cover here regarding what they had to say. So this is the affidavit. This is where it starts. OK, and they obviously blocked out the name of the FBI agent, but an FBI agent wrote this out um, with the aid of prosecutors. The prosecutors go over and make sure that the information is correct before they give it to the judge. FBI agents, when it comes to important cases like this, work with um, prosecutors at the Justice Department, the appropriate U.S. attorneys to make sure that everything's you know legally correct. And then they file it with the judge. That's usually how things work in these cases. So according to the affidavit of the FBI agent here, they go on to lay out a timeline of events, which I'm going to briefly cover. Then we're going to get to the intelligence, the types of intelligence files that were taken here, which this was informative for me because I'm not an expert in the types of intelligence that's available out there. So this was very informative and I want to give you guys that information as well. So let's briefly cover this. So it was back on February 9th that NARA first asked for Donald Trump to return these documents, okay, that he had taken from uh, to Mar-a-Lago. And some of those some of those were returned eventually, but not enough and not all. And when they got uh, when they got reports from the informants that there are still documents there that might be a threat to national security and other things, classified documents, that's when they decided to go in. So as they explain here, the investigation began as a result of a referral from the U.S. National Archives, NARA, sent to the Justice Department on February 9th. After an initial review of the NARA referral, the FBI started a criminal investigation to determine, among other things, how the documents with classified markings and records were removed from the White House and came to be stored at the premises, Mar-a-Lago, determine whether the storage locations at the premises were authorized locations for the storage of classified information, determine whether any additional classified documents or records may have been stored in an unauthorized location at the premises or other unknown location, and whether they remain at any such location, identify any person who may have removed or retained classified information without authorization and in an unauthorized space. The FBI's investigation has established that documents bearing classification markings which appear to contain national defense information, NDI, were among the materials contained in the 15 boxes and were stored at the premises in an unauthorized location. So that makes Donald Trump look more guilty. That's one of the examples I talk about of him looking more guilty. It's verified now that national defense information was stored in an unsecured location. That's what this verifies. Next, further, there is probable cause to believe that additional documents that contain classified NDI or that are presidential records subject to records retention requirements currently re uh, remain at the premises. There is also probable cause to believe that evidence of obstruction will be found at the premises. And then we get some information about the FBI agent working on this, which is relevant because this is an FBI agent that has experience in intelligence, and that's relevant here. I am a special agent with the FBI assigned to the Washington field office. During this time, I have received training at the FBI Academy located in Quantico, Virginia, specific to counterintelligence and espionage investigations. Based on my experience and training, I am familiar with efforts used to unlawfully collect, retain, and disseminate sensitive government information, including classified documents having to do with national defense intelligence. I make this affidavit in support of an application under Rule 41 of the Federal Rules of Criminal Procedure for a warrant to search the premises known as Mar-a-Lago, which is the address here, as further described in Attachment A. All right, so next we get to the charges here. We already know about 18 U.S. Code 793, that's espionage, which has to do with mishandling of government information, which which goes from 
misplacing them to giving them to the enemy. There's a lot of things covered in 793. Okay, and they and they go on to list uh, some 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 portion of 793 here. That's not the most important thing. We already know what the Espionage Act has to do with. I want to focus more on Executive Order 13 of 526. Okay, because this goes on to lay out the intelligence information that might have been leaked and why the government was worried. So this is the most important part. Under Executive Order 13 of 526, information in any form may be classified if it number one is owned by, produced by, or for or is under the control of the United States government. Two, falls within one or more of the categories set forth in, ex in the executive order. Top secret, secret and confidential. And three, if classified by an original classification authority who determines that its unauthorized disclosure reasonably could be expected to result in damage to national security. Where such unauthorized disclosure could reasonably result in damage to national security, the information may be classified as confidential and must be properly safeguarded. Where such unauthorized disclosure could reasonably result in serious damage to national security, the information may be classified as secret and must be properly safeguarded. And where such unauthorized disclosure could reasonably result in exceptional grave damage to national security, the information may be classified as top secret and must be properly safeguarded. Sensitive compartmented information or SCI means classified information concerning or derived from intelligence sources, methods, and analytical processes, which is required to be handled within formal access control systems. These sensitive compartmented information is read in SCIFs. That's what the uh, formal access controls that they're talking about are. Special intelligence or SI is an SCI control system designed to protect technical and intelligence information derived from monitoring of foreign communication signals by other than the intended recipients. The SI control system protects SI-derived information and information relating to SI activities, capabilities, techniques, processes, and procedures. Humid Control System, or HCS, is an SCI control system designed to protect intelligence information derived from clandestine human sources, commonly referred to as human intelligence. That has to do with CIA agents and their information and or confidential informants who are working with them. That's what they're talking about there. The HCS control system protects human intelligence derived from information and information relating to human intelligence activities, capabilities, techniques, process, and procedures. Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, or FISA, is a dissemination control designed to protect intelligence uh, information derived from collection of information authorized under the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act by the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court, or FISC abbreviated no foreign to indicate information that may not be released in any form to foreign governments foreign nationals foreign uh, organizations or non-us citizens without permission of the originator so that's information that that, Amer that the American government, for whatever reason, does not want other foreign governments to have. And that seems very clandestine and evil, but it's not. There, there's very reasonable reasons for these classification levels to exist. There are some details that other governments should not know about us, and there are secrets that other governments keep from us. Okay, things that other governments have no business knowing about the operations of our government and our business. So there's re there's re there are reasons behind these classifications which we don't know as lay people, but people who work with this stuff know, and they're there for a reason. Classified information may be marked as originator controlled, abbreviated, or con. This marking indicates that dissemination beyond pre-approved U.S. entities requires originator approval. Classified information of any designation may be shared only with persons determined by the appropriate U.S. government official to be eligible for access and who possesses need to know. Among other requirements, in order for a person to obtain security clearance, allowing that person access to classified U.S. government information, that person is required to and must agree to properly protect classified information by not disclosing such information to persons not entitled to receive it by not unlawfully removing classified information from authorized storage facilities and by storing classified information in unauthorized locations. If a person is not eligible to receive classified information, classified information may not be disclosed to that person. In order for a foreign government to receive access to classified information, the originating U.S. agency must determine that such release is appropriate. So this section disproves the ridiculous idea that Donald Trump can magically wave a wand and say, 
I declassify thee and it's declassified. It's ridiculous. You have to actually consult with the appropriate U.S. intelligence agencies to make sure that this information can be declassified. So you can't just wave a wand and say that I declassify thee and it's all good because that's what Cash Patel and other lunatics and criminals have been saying in the media. They wanted everything unredacted, but when Cash Patel's name was part, which was part of the uh, the affidavit here, was released, they were very mad about it. I'll show you guys that part in a second here. So. So this, I just want to uh, highlight this because this proves that Donald Trump can't just wave a wand. He has to consult with multiple agencies that are relevant to the uh, documents in question to actually go through the declassification process. There has to be a paper trail that shows everybody else in, in uh, that sees these documents and that has access that they have been declassified and they can look at them. There has to be consultation with the appropriate agencies to make sure that this information can be declassified that it wouldn't hurt our national security if it gets out before you can declassify it so this idea that he can wave a wand and declassify anything he likes is a lie is an absolute lie so think about it logically for a second before you believe the ridiculous excuses that donald trump comes up with and the people who work for him pursuant to executive order 13526 classified information contained on automated information systems including networks and telecommunication systems that collect create communicate compute disseminate process and store classified information must be maintained in a manner that one prevents access by unauthorized persons and two ensures the integrity of the information so this is relevant as well because some ukrainian woman got into and played golf with donald trump and lindsey graham she just got access to mar lago she came right into the building uh, and were not stopped by secret uh, secret service because secret service job is to make sure that people don't have weapons when they enter the premises so even though they're there they're not checking id and she used a fake name called anna de rothschild she, she's a she has a ukrainian long ukrainian name and but nevertheless she lied and got into the building because she looked like a rich person she was dressed in expensive clothing had expensive jewelry and was driving an expensive car so trump is like hey come on in so the reason i read this is because any unauthorized person can get into mar lago this ukrainian national who got in had no authorization to uh, access these documents but they were not kept in a safe place which has already been verified by the fbi and that puts national security data at risk for unauthorized persons to access it. That's the whole point. For me, the, learning all this was valuable. I didn't know about the different types of intelligence. So that was helpful to know. And they go on to explain other things. And they also going to go on to explain why this is a violation of uh, 18 U.S. Code 1519, 18 U.S. Code uh, 2071, and also 18 U.S. Code 793, which they explained prior. So that was important information for probable cause because they had real reason to believe that these were kept in an unsafe place and that unauthorized persons can get access to them. That's one of the reasons that they went in, removing them from a place where they should have never been in the first place. OK. All right. So the redactions start right after this and they continue on for a while. And this has to do with uh, things that are relevant to the investigation and for the protection of witnesses. That's why these things have been redacted. And that's totally understandable. There are some things that are not, but they don't give you too much. So let's read a little bit of this. From May 16th to 18th, FBI agents conducted a preliminary review of the 15 boxes provided to NARA and identified documents with classification markings in 14 of the 15 boxes. A preliminary triage of the documents with the classification markings revealed the following approximate numbers. 184 unique documents bearing classification markings, including 67 documents marked confidential, 92 documents marked secret, and 25 documents marked top secret. Further, the FBI agents observed markings reflecting the following compartment slash dissemination controls, HCS, FISA, ORCON, NOFORN, and SI. Based on my triage and experience, I know that documents classified at these levels typically contain national defense information. Several of the documents also contain what appears to be the former president's handwritten notes. So I want to include this part in the video because it gives us specific numbers of the uh, confidential and secret and top secret information that he took. Also verifies that HCS and FISA, ORCON and no foreign and SI information was also included in the boxes. OK, they don't give us specific numbers on that. That may be because of some classification or maybe they expand on this here, but it's redacted because it's classified. OK. Next, after those redactions, we get to Cash Patel, who's also included here, and you'll see why. In the second such letter, which is attached as Exhibit 1, 
Former president's counsel, there's a letter uh, from one of Donald Trump's lawyers, Cochran, which I'll show you guys briefly in a second. Cochran asked the DOJ to consider a few principles, which include for the former president counsel's claim that a president has absolute authority to declassify documents. Not true, uh, or at least it's limited by having to talk with other people before he does it. But yes, he can try to declassify any document he wants, but he has to talk to other people and consult with intelligence agencies before he randomly declassifies things that might be important. OK, just think about that for a second. It makes no sense that he can declassify anything he likes. What if some enemy states gets, gets their hands on that information, which can still be hot, which can still be, you know, damaging to America. So it's ridiculous, the idea that he can wave a wand and declassify anything he wants, which is what Cash Patel has been saying. In this letter, FOTUS's counsel, Cochrane, requested, among other things, uh, DOJ provide this letter to any judicial officer who is asked to rule on any such motion pertaining to this investigation or any application made in connection with any investigation requested concerning this investigation. I am aware of an article published in Breitbart on May 5th, 2022, available at the following link, which states that Cash Patel, who is described as a former Trump administration official, he worked for the DOD, which states that Cash Patel, who is a former DOD official for Donald Trump, characterized as misleading reports in other news organizations that NARA had found classified materials among records that FOTUS, the former president, provided to NARA from Mar-a-Lago. Patel alleged that such reports were misleading because f the former president had declassified the materials at issue. So I would have loved to see the rest of this where they talk about Cash Patel or at least the last sentence here, but for whatever reason, they uh, redacted that. But it's interesting that they dropped Cash Patel's name here. And he's important because he's out there right now attacking the DOJ FBI, claiming that they're corrupt with no evidence to back it up, of course. We have the same rinse repeat operation by the Democrats or the radical left in the media. The same corrupt FBI government gangsters, the same agents that were involved in Russia Gate. They want to hide the corruption of the FBI and DOJ. What the deep state does is they fight back by attacking us personally. And public enemy number one has always been Donald Trump. This is what the Mar-a-Lago raid was about. This farcical raid operation that the DOJ and the FBI is running as part of a political operation by the same select few of corrupt politicians who are acting as FBI agents. He just doesn't like that he that his uh, former boss is a criminal and the uh, Justice Department is trying to get justice for the American people for the crimes of Donald Trump. He doesn't like that. And I love the fact that they uh, they unredacted his name. He was very mad about it. There's nothing he can do about it because the judge signed off on the release of this unredacted information. It doesn't necessarily see anything about him other than what's publicly available. Cash Patel is out there in public talking about this stuff. So why not? Why can't the Justice Department unredact his name? They said something that's factual. Breitbart wrote this article uh, citing Cash Patel, who says and has been saying for weeks now that Donald Trump did not, that he has the authority to declassify anything he likes, like they state here. And that and he originally apparently said that there was no classified information in, in what he said, and which is something that Donald Trump himself said. He said that all this information is declassified. There's nothing, you know, uh, dangerous uh, among these documents that I took. That, that was one of Donald Trump's excuses. He said that. And also Cash Patel said that. So none of this information is secret. This is all public information. So anybody whining about Cash Patel's name being unredacted here is wrong. There's not there's no legal claim for him here. The DOJ had all the right to unclassify, uh, 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 unredact this. OK, because it's relevant. I highlighted this because this is regarding the probable cause for the search. There is probable cause to believe that documents containing classified national defense intelligence and presidential records remain at the premises. So they provide their reasoning here, which we can't see for this particular uh, subject, which they uh, which they unredacted for a reason so that we can all know that the FBI agent provided relevant evidence for the search that there's a reason they are un they unredacted this. So people know that there's this this was not done willy nilly. OK, this was well thought out. And we have evidence from the uh, from the FBI uh, agent who wrote this for the affidavit that there was evidence that uh, these uh, national defense intelligence um, papers remained at the premises, which are a danger. OK, to the U.S., which is one of the reasons they waited. And last thing I want to cover here is regarding the uh, places that they search within Mar-a-Lago. Based upon this investigation, I believe that storage room the former president's residential suite, 
Pine Hall and the quote 45 room and other spaces within the premises are not currently authorized locations for the storage of classified information or national defense information. Similarly, based upon this investigation, I do not believe that any spaces within the premises have been authorized for the storage of classified information at least since the end of the former president's presidential administration on January 20th of 2021. As I described below, evidence of subject offenses has been stored in multiple locations in the premises. All right, so I wanted to highlight that part because that shows that none of the places where this information was being kept, these, these uh, boxes we were being kept, were secure. And the FBI had all the right to take them back to a safe place. So all, all the things that they uh, unredacted here have to do with giving information to the public that there is a very good reason why we did this uh, very, very polite raid, okay? Based on judicial approval, going through all the legal processes, there was nothing illegal about it. It was completely fair. We do this to criminals all the time, the FBI does. And it was done, it just happens to be that the former president of the US is a giant criminal and they had to do, do a search of his uh, premises. So that is the bottom line for my coverage on this and my commentary. I think you guys know where I stand. And if you read this, which I recommend you do, uh, go through it yourself and you will see that the FBI search was perfectly legal. They were looking for things that can damage the U.S. national security and they found it and they took it back. OK, and whatever was uh, not relevant to the investigation will be has been returned to Donald Trump like his passports and will be returned as they go through these documents because he mixed in things that were not relevant with the relevant national uh, security stuff because Donald Trump is a clown and a messy monkey. OK, so, of course, there were uh, irrelevant things stuffed into these boxes as well, and those will be returned back to him uh, when the appropriate time arrives. And again, he has not been indicted. He has not been arrested. When he is, he will be able to see the evidence against him. All exculpatory evidence will be turned over by the government in accordance with Rule 16 discovery of the federal rules of criminal procedure. So there's nothing unfair being done here. The Justice Department is following the law to the letter, and so has the FBI, and everything that they have done is within the law and required for the protection of the U.S. And that's the bottom line. That's all I got to say for this video. Thank you so much for watching. See you guys next time. Make sure to like the video, subscribe, hit the bell, press all for future videos. And you can go to Patreon down below to support the show if you like my content. See you guys next time. Peace. No more questions. The insurance paperwork is going to be a nightmare. Yeah, Blarg. Can you see how sorry I am? Hey, Dreddy Boy, that's business. Welcome to my world. Stay off mine. Hmm? Come in, just sort of shake hands. Get out of my face. But, um, this ain't the laughing matter. All that drock about jurisdiction cost me an arrest. In my book, that's interfering with judge business. And that is a crime. Oh, come on. No, you come on. This is Mega City One. We don't do demarcation. We don't pussyfoot around. Dread. The law is all that matters. Someone messes with the law. Someone messes with me. Oh, to be like this? Hope you I... like corporation property creep. Because next time you cross that line, you're under arrest. <laughs> All right, Dreddy. Have it your own way. Now get out of my sight. Oh, forget it, Joe. That's Alien Town. There ain't no such thing as justice. While I'm around, I am the law. And don't you forget it. Thank <laughs> you.